Greetings, denizens of Astulon, and welcome to the very first Lord of the Cast. Today, we will be interviewing our very own beardy head admin, Shift Native. Yes, yes, you are right, my friend. Now, we have multiple sets of questions which we have received from our various players. Bitto and the rest of the media team have gladly compiled all of us a list. So we're going to just head off and begin with the first question. So, question one is, Native, what's your, what's your average day like managing Lord of the Craft? Well, I usually wake up in a haze around noon or so try to stumble into the shower and whilst my water is getting hot I sit on the shower floor or the bathroom floor rather and I look over the forums on my phone this is prior to eating drinking washing and other things on my list the only thing that comes first to LOTC would be me waking up but on the average day I usually check right away onto the forums on my messages and then I open up Skype to see the horde of messages there as well. It usually take up a lot of my time, but eventually I'll log on and, and hope to see only a few mod requests, but I have been partaking in those quite a bit as well recently. Excellent. Traveling into the depths of Native's life. Hmm. Very so the same. All right. So, um... Next question we have is, would you enjoy making a secret alternate account and playing Among Us? Those admin duties must get tiring. We all need breaks, no? Absolutely. When I was in Aegis, I um, had this very same idea and actually followed through with it. And it was only a few hours later to when the GM team figured out who I was. I didn't even want them to know, and they figured out rather quickly based upon my application. Which bummed, which bummed me out because then it spread like wire f wildfire and soon enough I was doing mod requests on that one too. Um, so I made another account and I posed to be a female this time to only you know, make myself more elusive. At first the admins thought this chick was far too good to be true and were excited to meet her until they realized it was indeed me. This was my third account. <laughs> so uh, I haven't been able to remain anonymous but uh, my efforts in doing so were fun, I suppose. So how long did it take after you posted the female app for them to figure out that it was you? The female app was probably two days. Leary really caught on to it. I was commenting on her page, uh, you know, talking to her, and she's like, oh, I'm excited you're playing, and I was like, wee, this is fun. And she thought I was a chick, but when she figured it out, <laughs> she just bopped me on the nose, and I returned to my doghouse with my tail between my legs. Uh... <laughs> True stories. I've I would love to try to do that sometime, but I doubt it would kind of work out. But there we go. So it has in fact worked for anybody out there, any admins wanting to slip under the radar and kind of go along with the players. Native has indeed done it, and eventually had to deal with Leary's unfortunate sadness because she did not have a female companion to sort of bond with throughout playing. Alrighty, well this question is asked by Aizen, and he wants to know, what's your favorite event since the server began? Hmm, well I think it's best I answer this question in two ways. Um, one from the perspective of in my RP and my character is a favorite event, or you know, one that I participated in in character, and one that I participated in out of character. Uh, my in character favorite event would most likely be... Um, Glory days at uh, the battle at um, Calbrist against the undead, because I literally went there alone following lightning strikes. I had never been to Calbrist before, and I walked on foot, um, and I pelted a whole bunch of undead with arrows, and they were on top of the tower, and it was really good fun. But as far as OOC events, um, or I guess I was in character, but this wasn't particularly me, however. I guess I would have to go with the, the battle at San Giselle when I played as a kind of an entity summoning creatures towards, you know, uh, the San Giselle walls and the players fought off these creatures for about 25 minutes and a whole lot of mob spawning and a whole lot of emotes and whispering to them and things. It was really, really fun and cinematic, so it's probably two, my, two of my favorites, both battles. Awesome. Um, let's see. 
why did I make the color that green? <laughs> this is by Fire Spirit Forty Four on the forums. Uh, what makes a good event? What makes a good event? Um, I would say substance. Um, just things for people to soak up, whether it be lore or things to, that make them wonder a bit. For instance, uh, there was an event proposal recently by a player who just wanted to make a cave where he would put books all throughout the cave and you would fight your way through creatures to, to hear the story about this uh, adventurer who went into the cave. Um, we gave him creative and he built this really great place and it's sectioned off and hidden in Azalon. If you find it, it tells you to make a mod request and the GM then goes inside and spawns creatures for you and plays the roles of some of the creatures and fights you and things. I think people really enjoy those because not only do you get to hit things with weapons and, and get loots, but there's also that story element which adds the kind of substance and you can do it over and over again as well, which is pretty nice. nice. Oh, gosh, they asked another question. Uh, and how does being the end of complaints feel like when everybody looks at you? <laughs> um, I guess it feels kind of like crap, but it's not so bad, really. And, um, you know, it's just one of those things where, you know, you have to be the one person to say, you know, we're all in it together. And um, LOTC is like a community I've never seen before and people really are kind of together and you see people like Sir Wyvernos making those video blogs and you know people uh, having you know people in their family with injuries and, and um, things like that I mean it all really kind of makes it worth it when you hear people commenting to each other whether or not they even know each other and just giving each other support and, and hope and and all that so it's not so bad and because Hellfon has actually given me, allowed me to answer, ask this last question before he goes off to a player who's asking roughly seven questions. <laughs> hmm. This is by Leland22. He asks, when is the LOTC client coming out? When is the client coming out? Boy, that'd be fantastic, wouldn't it? However, um, the quick scene said in the past, sometime in the summer, I know that this is the last month of school for him, and he would look forward to making such a client. Um, and I, he does have, uh, you know, the ideas behind it and, and creating it. And I'm sure he could go about doing it, but the poor guy is goes to a private school. And not only does he go to a private school, but he's in the advanced classes. So he gets a whole lot of, you know, stuff that he's expected to do, especially this time around of the year. But should happen this summer, and we should be able to uh, patch each and all everyone's jar so we can have all the pretty additions to things and a fancy GUI. All right, lovely. Now, the next couple of questions are asked by RustJ7X, and the first question he asks, Native, if there's one thing you can bring into the world of Astulon from our previous world of Aegis, what would that be? It would absolutely be a central road and or a, something other than the way we have spawn now. Um, didn't really foresee it. it. Actually, sounded really fun to have spawn in the center. And when we, when I thought about spawn, I, I kind of wanted it to be a neutral city more so as just like uh, the place where the monks heal you. Um, however, you know, there was a lot of people making their own trade cities and things, and there's we didn't want to deter from that, so we decided to make spawn just a spawn and um, not so much a shop and or village. Um, so yeah. Uh, if I could bring anything here, it would absolutely be a main road or just a different type of road system to where it kind of hits them all together in, in some place other than the center of the map. All right, all right. I actually kind of like that. I wish if there was one thing I'd rather have, it would probably be all the trees in Malinor. I love the trees. <laughs> all right. Uh, the next question is, what would you say makes the best roleplay experience, not just for new players, but the long-serving experienced ones? those people willing to uh, explain the details. A lot of the people who um, have been renowned for their roleplay um, hasn't been the dramatic outcomes that they stir up in the deep reaches of their mind. It has been the guys who are playing the farmer really farming, other than clicking the wheat. He's emoting that he's, you know, tearing out them, the roots of things and old men who wander around the town and, and kind of mumble things and um, kind of larger than life characters or, or just the people that are willing to go through the 
go through the length to do the, the RP. For instance, a, a smithy who, instead of just forging your blade on the workbench, he hammers it into a blade um, on iron um, block and, you know, emotes all the bits of pouring, you know, the steel and hammering it out and firing it and all the things that really go into blacksmithing. If they're detailed to you, then it's like, there's like, you know, you don't really need it to happen because you're reading it and you're visualizing it and it's fantastic. All right. I have also heard that role playing an old man is supposed to be extreme fun. Yes, it is. <laughs> All right. So, what is your most memorable time from the Lost Land of Ages? Most memorable time. Hmm. I say it would be the first day when I stood outside the gates of Lorlin and a uh, hundred people logged in, and being closest to spawn, um, I saw quite a lot of elves and things pouring down the road to me and they all wanted to trade and they all wanted a house um, <laughs> I can't forget it because it was just absolute chaos but it organized quite well once I had built a booth I didn't have a booth at first and, and um, it was a little bit of mayhem but uh, people started lining up and then soon enough it all kinda fell into place and it's just something I'll never forget ever so was um did you start off as high prince high prince or did people kind of turn to you and say this guy has a bunch of leadership qualities and then did the elves elect you or how did that kind of work out for your character? Uh, I I started as the high prince as a founder of the realm or of uh, our settlement in the realm and um, I had built a city by myself and you know distributed homes and uh, each nation started out with. Uh, about 50,000 minutes or so, and so that's how the economy kind of started there. Alright, and this last question is, if you could introduce one item from the real world or imagination into Lord of the Craft, what would this be and why? It would absolutely be a shield. Um, I think not only because they look magnificent, and I can only imagine a Minecraft character, you know, sc scurrying about with a shield, but they're it would just really have a lot of fun in the, the PvP aspect, and you could have an option of defending yourself in that kind of uh, situation, I guess. Other than just taking the blow right into your armor. Yeah, I can see that. I, it, I mean, I've seen a lot of mods where they have the shields, and they're just, like wicked helpful. I mean, if you're sitting there and you got a bunch of people firing the arrows at you, the whole sword blocking thing is kind of unaffected. Alrighty, well the next questions, um, I'm gonna actually hold off on these questions for a moment, just to actually ask you a question. Um, for, when you, in the question when you answered the best roleplay experience, one from Rusty. So, I, one would assume that in video games nowadays, the, having a player do the job of the NPC is essentially the best roleplay. Am I, am I understanding that correctly? Basically, yes. Most games you'd see now, all the cinematics are there for you happening and so you really don't have to imagine them but since we're here in this sandbox of a game to see the people go through the links to describe to you um, is pretty great especially uh, you know a lot of people learn from um, these types of things as well because it's literature it's you know you guys you don't need to be the amazing hero of the day who saves Alcazar and whatnot just be a simple farmer you'll have fun with it <laughs> It's so basically how Respirin became a GM. <laughs> <laughs> um, these three questions are asked by 123trevmo321 on the forums. And I think we actually answered this one, but I'm going to ask it anyways. Have you completed the Magic Team's forum tag yet? XD. Haha, <laughs> yes, I did last night after I had returned home around 2 in the morning with too much quote unquote cake and ice cream. Oh, oh I see. Ice cream. <laughs> oh, so that's why you, we had to delay till this new one. Oh. Yes, yes. What kind of cake? Uh, chocolate, right? Yes. <laughs> chocolate. <laughs> uh... See, I was there, you know. Ah, <laughs> uh, now this is going to be the best question I think in the entire list. Um, he asks as well, how does it feel to have been with the server for almost one year? Oh my! Well, it is incredible. I couldn't um, even fathom because prior to joining this server, I had hadn't really played Minecraft for long, nor had I known much about the multiplayer um, aspect or even the community 
of Minecraft in general. So to be here now at such a kind of height in in Minecraft is pretty great, especially after you know everybody helping out going to uh, Minecon and, and us getting there. We really are an underdog in Minecraft, but um, it's kind of like a hidden gem. A lot of people find us and they're really kind of wowed by a lot of the efforts um, everyone has put in. I mean, the forums nearly over 350,000 posts, and to just tell someone, you know, we have over a quarter of a million posts nearly, and eventually, you know, half a million posts is just outstanding. It's, it's a lot of people doing a lot here, so. All right. So, I mean, it really is. I mean, we have, if we look at it now, we have, I believe, 25,000 members. We have 1,000 active members, you know, basically each consecutive hour. And, you know, it's all because of the hard work of basically every player. We have our staff and we have all the players who are just really keeping us, you know, we're keeping us kicking and the role play is just getting significantly better. So, the next question now comes from Emerald Stag, and I'm sure you can relate, Native. How does one grow such a beard? Oh, well, well, my friend. You visit many forests and you see many rough times. And by rough times, I don't mean bad times. They can just be rough. You can spend nights out in the wilderness, or you can spend days rubbing your face against tree trunks. Um, they all work just to go out there and look at all that lovely, and it'll, your beard will just start sprouting. Anybody RPing a child, go ram your face up against a tree, rub it up and down a bit, and you'll look just like native. <laughs> or... Or you could be a slave for 20 in game years. That works too. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right, next <laughs> question. Yes. Yeah. Next question comes from Gaius Marius. And Gaius asks, when can we expect mob control and mob writer to be reinstituted? Hmm, that's an excellent question. Something I haven't really looked into in quite a while, but um, we can go cruising the bucket forums and things, and uh, we could probably get it in this weekend. Um, the rest of Vax plugin will also be done this weekend, so we'll be in, in doing the inheritance and, and all that jazz. Thank God I miss writing my battle chicken. <laughs> it's something I've always wanted to do, is next time I see a GM or a dragon, wink wink, I'm going to run up to it run up to it in a saddle and try to become the very first dragon rider of Astrodon. Hmm. Good luck with that. I will catch you. <laughs> I will spend all of Renatus' money to try and capture the first dragon. <laughs> Not that it will be uh, effective, but... Alright, next question from Boombox. Uh, oh, no, just kidding. Next question is from Alcanar, and Alcanar <laughs> asks... Are you planning on doing anything further with the Aegis and Undead slash Nether? Ah, well... Yes, they, um... They too could have um, visited Aslan in ancient times, as our ancestors had um, come here for things as well, and were ultimately driven out here as well. So um, just stay tuned for that bit as uh, the lore masters work up their magic. I right. look forward to it. All right, and we have a question from Monk Urgal of Again, kind of regarding the same little plug-in topic. And I've actually wondered this myself. I went and took a look at my player card yesterday, and it said uh, Allegiance. Is uh, What does the Allegiance thing on the Slash Me player card do? Uh, yes. Well, this weekend, you'll see the Allegiance card actually have something going on with it. But the Allegiance is relative to what nation you're, def you're um, uh, dep like uh, fighting for, rather. And... Um, each settlement will have inheritance, so when a GM um, sets your settlement up, if it's within nation territory, um, or if it's aligned with the nation at all, uh, when a player um, applies to um, be a part of the town, uh, it'll ping the allegiance on his card to whichever nation that settlement um, is fighting for, or, you know, allied with. Alrighty. This question is by Alcanar. Uh, oh, this is in response to the allegiance. Will it be changeable? Will it be changeable? Uh, yes, absolutely. Um, it really... I, actually, I'm not sure if the way VAC is coding it, if it's going to be 
tied in just to the settlement you're affiliated with, but um, we could we could set it changeable because uh, as long as the settlement is automatically pinging it, then your player cards won't really reflect anything as far as data is concerned. So it'll just be kind of your own benefit. Um, so I don't see any problem with making it changeable for players. Alrighty then. <laughs> Jingy asks, what time is this live stream? Right now. Right now. <laughs> 8 o'clock on the Thursday. Oh, 7 o'clock for you. 8 o'clock for me on the East Coast at... Yeah, 8 o'clock. <laughs> I'm sorry, Jingy, if you missed it, but... You were late. Just by a bit. <laughs> Just by a bit, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is, I think, the best question of all. Nanook asks, why are you so awesome, Shift? Oh my. It's all that, <laughs> it's all that time spent gazing at fauna and shrubbery. A shrubbery? Yes. The longer you look at plants and the longer you look at nature, the better person you become. And the more herring you use to chop them down. <laughs> <laughs> uh... Now the last and final questions were these have been PM to me via um TeamSpeak. And Owaki Penguin wants me as bullets, you know, Mob Riders is not updated to one point two point five currently. Apparently he stocks mm. the bucket forums. Well that's very handy then. And I guess it's something we'll most likely have to wait for mod API is released. A lot of people don't really feel like bothering messing with their plugins because they break very often and as soon as mod API comes out not only are they going to be able to reinstate reinstitute their plugin uh, a little more effectively considering the API will probably set the stage for a lot of multiplayer things but uh, it'll be able they'll be allowed to do other things as well so it'll just be completely um, obsolete once mod API comes out they also asks could we get you to talk a little more about the More Physics plugin so people could get a good understanding? Mm, well, uh, I've had it linked to me a few times, and I even I sent it to Vac. Uh, I sent it the details about the things we wanted turned off and turned on, but it would just be a great thing to have because it'll add, you know, a whole. Uh, you'll have to actually take your armor off if you're going to chase some some guy, you know, down with just with leather armor. And, um, you know, people are going to just throw it off without emoting it, but at least it, it, it has them do so. The only thing we're really going to put in and the only thing we're really uh, loving about the plugin was the fact that armor slows you down as far as walking and moving around, and it makes you sink when you swim. So this should allow for some more fun escapes or um, things like that. There's a few other things as well, like um, arrows, for example, uh, depending on where they hit you, they, they do more damage. This is kind of neat, as uh, archery has been uh, explained to be rather um, n kind of nerfed at the moment and not not so good. So this might help out some of that if you can hit him in the head. <laughs> I'm not sure, but um, still something we'll, we'll look forward to getting most likely this weekend. Put it in, and if we don't like it, we'll just take it out. So wait, archery is nerfed. I thought with a power one bow and hundred archery, you could be one shotted. Uh, I don't know. You hear both sides, don't you? But I'm not sure just what that location means. However, it does mean that if you have a power one bow and a hundred archery and you shoot him in the foot, probably won't kill him. Hmm. Okay. Oh, Cloak's were just giving me a question over Skype. Gosh darn it, Cloak, do you always always have to PM me something? We're almost done. <laughs> Will there be an increase in mob spawn slash how many meters you earn from it? Apparently he hasn't seen a mob in two real life weeks and he's stuck at zero minas. Oh wow. Yeah, I, I actually haven't seen very many uh, aggressive creatures as well, so um, hopefully we can uh, ramp that up a bit. I know it's it's toned down quite a bit uh, to uh, assist with lag, but it also plays a part into where they spawn. And I know that it's, you have to be within an area for a certain amount of time as well. They spawn around you. Um, but yeah, hopefully we can do a little bit more because uh, we've we've recently spent you know some money on getting the server more uh, memory, so we should be able to uh, hopefully handle more creatures as well. But uh, I can't really say at the moment. 
we could definitely uh, check what other people think on the forums if they don't see creatures either. Try to um, definitely add some in there, or maybe even take some of the laggy ones out and put in other ones like uh, slimes and, and um, blazes, for example, are kind of laggy and kind of glitchy anyway, so we could reinstitute other creatures to make up for it while getting rid of lag at the same time. Pigmen would be nice. Yeah. Miss all that chain mail. Remember the times when, uh, in The Verge, I would go in, there'd basically be followed up by 200 slimes. Have to run for my life and book it up into the trees. Good days, good days. Anyway, so, <laughs> uh, if anybody has any further questions for Native, feel free to post those in this little chat here, and we'll just oh, read them out. Oh, we've got two more. Oh, we do have two more. Yeah, right, we got bad. two more. My bad. Beto, if you would like to continue, and everybody can still post their questions. So, go ahead, Beto. These last two are by Melodic Hand. Uh, first, he wants to know, can I has the map he's playing? <laughs> uh, yeah, actually, um, I can post that um, on TeamSpeak or on the live stream here in a bit, if you wish. And the final question he asks, what texture pack are you using currently in the live stream? I'm using John Smith, easily my favorite texture pack of all time. Well, there you have it. For those, if you have questions, post them now. Or forever hold your peace. Yeah, and then somebody asks, uh, they were wondering about the mob EA region. What that, whatever that means. Uh, the mob regions, those are mob spawning regions that, uh, disable and enable certain mob types, so they're specific to boundaries, and that you kind of have to, if you wish to kill a certain creature or find a certain creature, you have to explore into a different area. This is to allow for different types of players to meet other types of players, because they'll have to go certain places to actually get certain resources. Uh, I saw this question earlier on. Uh, Minecraft on um, the PC versus 360, which one would you prefer? Uh, absolutely the PC, mostly because of all the performance uh, enhancing mods and, and uh, different things you can do with shaders and all that stuff. Um, you can really make Minecraft look a whole lot different. And just using the mouse is something that uh, many PC gamers have fallen in love with and usually won't give up for much. So for yeah, me, it's... for me, it'll always be the PC. It's hard to get used to it without it. I mean, they kind of like automatically give you the crafting sort of things that you need. So like, all you need to do is scroll over the item you will be crafting, and as long as you have the items in your event in your inventory needed to make it, it kind of shows up there in either red if you don't have it or just normal if you don't have it. And uh, I also got a question here from Mom, my uh, monk Gurajal and he asks, Were the, will there ever be a new Verge or a link to the Verge? The Verge, um, I think that we definitely could uh, have a reason to return to the Verge sometime this summer um, and if we don't there will definitely be an alternate destination um, aka another server that you could teleport to um, that'll have something similar to the way we had the Verge. More p p more PMs. Uh, I got mm -hmm. one from on TeamSpeak by Milo Goodbody. I don't know what he means by this. Ask about skill experience gains. Oh, um, well, it's probably the sword. I know that this, the swordsmanship uh, takes quite a, a long time to level, and some of the skills may uh, actually m more time to level than others. Some of which uh, some people have expressed to be too difficult, perhaps. Um, well, good news: Vac has given us the entirety of the source code for his custom skills plugin, so that we can do this very thing, which is make tweaks and fixes when he cannot. Um, however, this means we also need to find someone capable and someone willing to help us out a bit, which I've been on the lookout for and have posted on bucket forums and help. Planet Minecraft and etc. So, um, like I said, the framework is already there in the plugin, so changing the variables really isn't too much work. So we'll see. Um, 
about those kinds of things, you might want to just post on the feedback section of the forums, see what other players think, and if you can get an actual number for us, that'd be great as well. Oh, I have a question of my, my uh, own. Um, what about racial benefits for skills? Those work in too? Yeah, we can actually do those now as well if we were to have someone willing to do the work. However, um, VAC will be out for summer in less than two weeks. So, who knows, maybe he'll feel uh, up to the challenge of meeting some of the some of the requirements and some of the things we, you know, really think are something that would be great to add, aka racial benefits and other things like that. Um, if he's willing and if he can do it, then by all means we can let him do it, but um, we're still on the hunt for someone who is capable and willing as well. Oh, actually, Penguin asks, or pokes me saying, tell him to look into the modder Nopes. He's very friendly, he's been on our forum before, he may be willing to help. Oh, well, that would be great. If you have a link to anything he has done and or his Skype or anything or his forum uh, profile, anything like that, feel free to message to me on the forums and I will uh, personally uh, talk to him, see what he's up to and all that. So that's cool. Hey, wake up. As well as everyone in the live stream, I will ask your the question that's been burning on your guys' minds most that you've been spamming for the last five minutes about. Shops. Shops. When will they come back? Shops. Well, I did look at Chess Shop, which is currently pretty much our only option, and I saw there was some complaints about the um, permissions involving how much these shops cost and how many times a player can actually make a shop. Um, now, what that means is that um, if those don't work, um, we're going to have to uh, we can implement the plugin. However, a GM will need to make you have to uh, a GM will have to make each and every shop for each player, and we'll set the price of each shop. Basically, you pay the GM a certain amount of minutes, and and we'll set the shop up for you. And depending on your rank, you can make a certain amount of shops, and that's it. Um, chess shop seems like the only answer uh, from my perspective. But if you can look around and if you see anything else that you think is better, um, I really don't think there's much out there at the moment because plugins are kind of halted anyway. But um, yes, I've been thinking about a shop plugin quite a lot because um, people love trade. I love trade. When I play MMOs, I love to you know, buy and sell. In my free time, I play EverQuest, and I'm only level 16, but I've been playing for months. Why? Because I sit in the trade tunnel, and I buy and sell items to players. So um, a shop is definitely something we need, and hopefully we can get Chess Shop in this weekend um, and yep, it'll have the limitations I mentioned before if we can't get the permission set. All right, so a lot new coming here, folks. And uh, yep, so this was interviewing Native. Native, do you have any special words to our viewers and our Lord of the Crafters? Uh, I just want to encourage everyone to um, take the time to make something really unique and really fun for someone else when you're in and on the server. Um, just think about being that guy or that girl for, you know, your buddy or the guy walking down the road. Just making an experience for them that they can't forget because I love logging on the forum sometime and reading a status of, a, of someone saying, you know, wow, I, I, I had some of the best RP I've ever had today. And, you know, there's just the little things that can really, you know, make someone happy to be here and just... Uh, want to do the same and kind of give back as well. So if we all just make it for each other, then, you know, we'll have something even more special. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that was Shift Native, and you're listening to the Lord of the Cast featuring Bido and Benaven. Uh Next week, upcoming, we have Cloak Sphere, Wyvernos the Seventh, handling one of our many episodes about upcoming games and other things around the whole community. Thank you for watching. Actually, Lord I might be in that one. As well as Brendan. Woo woo woo! <laughs> Thank you for watching the very first uh, recontinued episode of Lord of the Craft. And I'd also like to take this time to uh, mention Kataris for a moment. I'd like to say, Kataris, um, basically, the revival of this is not in any way against you. We are absolutely you know, overjoyed that you had the chance to do the podcast while you could. 
But um, we've, you know, for now, we've kind of taken it and decided to do uh, the podcast. We will definitely be talking to you uh, at some point to, uh, you know, about the podcast and what you would like to do next. But basically, thank you for listening. And this hopefully will be on iTunes eventually. So have a fantastic evening, Lord of the Crafters. My name is Acer, buddy. I'm Ship Native. I'm Brunavan. And I'm the asshole Bitto. <laughs> oh, <Take> language. <laughs> what a great ending. You should just end it on, oh, language, and that's it. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> uh, wait, wait, wait. Rhino says he snuggled you, native, and he loves you. Oh, my. He will walk you down the aisle eventually. Glorious. Wait, what? <laughs> what? I. What? <laughs> I don't want to know. <laughs> <laughs>